What's going on, man? How are you? Good. How you doing? Doing well. Good. Pretty big spot here, opening the card on CBS. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a big one. You fired up? Fired up. Yep. And now, uh, obviously, the opponent, I think, has got a lot of people fired up. Uh, you guys were linked on, tagged on social media for, since you came back, really, that people yeah. wanted to see this fight. Yeah. So is it nice to, to kind of finally return and fight a rostered guy again? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those fights, man, where, like, I'm excited. I'm excited for this. You know, and I get it. Like, when I came back, I was out for years. So I had to start, you know, I fought some, you know, like, you know, like some, uh, some guys not on in the rankings, and that's that's all great. And uh, but it's tough to get excited for those kind of fights. You know what I mean? No one really knows who they are. You know, it's like it's almost like a lose lose situation. Where, like you have to beat them, and if you lose to them, that's terrible. And but everyone expects you to win anyways. Now this fight, when the fans and in, in the MMA, you know, the whole MMA scene wants to see this fight, that's exciting, and I can get amped up for that. You know. And I know both of you are pretty fiery guys. You have intense stare downs at the yeah, weigh-ins. Yeah. Your fighting styles are, are very aggressive. Yeah. But it seems like there's almost like this this respect where you guys kind of recognize the the savage that is your opponent. Um, yeah, is that yeah. kind of cool? Is there that kind of mutual it's respect? Cool. There? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, def, I, I got respect for him. I know he's got respect for me. You know, I, I can't say, you know, like I could never, you, I can't look at you in the eyes and say he's not dangerous. He can't look at you and say I'm not dangerous. We're both dangerous dudes. And there's some dangerous shit's going to happen out there. And it's probably not going to leave the fucking first round, honestly. You know what I mean? And, uh, so, like, what can you say? How can you get all fired up and talk all this shit to each other when you know that one of you is getting knocked out? You know what I mean? So, we just, we're going to let our hands talk. We're going to let our hands talk. And it's my understanding that you uh, are all, all in on MMA uh, for this camp. You kind of stepped away from your job and everything. Yeah. Can you talk about that decision? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I made that decision. Um, that was going to take time away from my job. And we, it was hard. It was hard for me to make that decision. You know, I had that level of comfortability working in the union. You know, we make good money. I provide a great living for my family. And it's like, you know, uh, do I want to just fight middle of the road guys at Mohegan Sun once or twice a year for the next couple of years? Or do I want to do I want to try to make a title run? And I said, you know, I don't want to look back at this. I don't want to look back at myself when I'm, you know, 50 years old and say, man, Man, you were still in your physical prime, and you just didn't go for it. I, I, I don't ever wanna, I don't ever want that. I don't wanna have any of those regrets. So now that I'm giving this, I'm giving this everything I got, right? I'm fully committed to this, training more than I've ever trained in my whole life, in better shape than I've ever been in, and I, I'm, and this is what it is. Whatever happens, if I get the belt, I get the belt. If I don't, I don't. But I can, I can, I can lay my head down at night and say I went for it. I went for it. No doubt, man. And um, just one more thing about the CBS. Yeah. I know your story was something that you shared, uh, your backstory, your time away from MMA to yeah. try to raise awareness. And obviously now you're going to be on a pretty large television station. Yeah. Um, how nice is that to be able to kind of use an even bigger platform now? Yeah, it's, it's great, man. It's, it's great. And, you know, and I, I really do feel compelled to, uh, you know, to, to use this platform that I have to, to, help, to help people. You know, because it, it's, a, it's a real problem, man. I, we don't have to get into it now. Everyone knows how real it is. Everyone's been affected by it. You know, if you haven't been affected by it, you, you personally, then you know someone who's been affected by it. You, everybody does. Everybody in this room knows somebody that's, that's been affected by that opioid epidemic, man, you know. And it had its hooks in me as bad as it's had its hooks in anybody, you know. And now I get to show the world that, hey, listen, man, like, you can put that shit down. You know, you can get right, get right with yourself, get right with your family, get right with whoever you got to get right with, get right with God, and you can come back and you can change your life, man. You know, and I'm that example because it doesn't get it doesn't get worse than what I was. It doesn't get any worse. I was bottom of the barrel, bottom of the barrel. Yep, for sure. What's up, Brendan over here? Oh, uh, one of the loudest environments I've been in in the last year was last June. Your uh, return to the Mohegan Sun when you were walking out, the crowd went crazy. Yep. Do you still expect to be a fan favorite out here in California? Uh, I I do honestly I I do I got a I have a pretty solid California following as well. Um, you know, with MMA being a lot more popular out here, and I, especially when I was spending a lot of time in uh, in Huntington Beach, you know, I'm I'm you know big in this. I, I surf a lot too, you know, and uh, I used to actually get you know uh, one time I had someone uh, paddle up to me out in the lineup, you know, it'll be we saw your uh, I had a knockout on Sports Center top ten. Or it was like it's number one, it's no big deal, <laughs> <laughs> no big deal, brother. <laughs> and, uh, no, I had a guy who was like, oh, we saw your knockout on top ten. I was like, oh yeah. It's Sweet, you know, it was crazy. But I do have a good fight. I got a lot of people coming out. A lot of my boys flew out. I got a big team here with me. A lot of guys I work with fly out, man. So you can expect some uh, some crazy construction workers in the house, man, repping that union money. You know how we do it. And uh, that's it, man. Yeah, I'm, I'll be uh, – the house will be rocking. 
It'll be rocking you, for me. Did your daughter make the trip out for this one? No, daughter didn't make the trip because my girl is, she's, she's pregnant, very, very pregnant. She's about to pop, so she didn't want, she didn't want to fly. But uh, my daughter's got school, you know. And this, is, this, is a, this is a business trip, you know what I'm saying? This is business. You know, I talk, FaceTime her all day, every day since I've been here, you know. You went back and forth with your opponent, Sab Sabah Masi a little bit on social media, but you also went back and forth with his teammate, Dalton Ross, at AT&T. Yeah. At AT&T, yeah. not yeah. AT&T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You said that he was next. You might move up to middlemate. You want to take yeah. out some ATT guys. Is that true? Do you feel a sense of animosity growing between you and that gym? I mean, not, not, see, see like, like animosity is not the word. A animosity wouldn't be the word. Like, definitely, because, like, I'm friendly with these guys. I'm friendly with these guys. And we, I think we got mutual respect for each other. But these dudes know I want it. These dudes know I'm coming. These dudes know I'm coming. And these dudes are like, come on, then. You want to come? Come on. And I'm saying, all right, I'm coming. They say, all right, we'll be fucking waiting for you. You know, they're not backing down. I'm not backing down. And it's fun, man. We're not going to fucking meet each other in the hallway and fucking shoulder check. That's not how we have to do it. You know, we all know that we're good fighters. We know that we keep it real. And, yeah, and it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's good and fun, but we're serious, too. You know what I mean? I'm not going to run into these dudes and start throwing punches in the hallway. <laughs> but these dudes, know I'm for, these dudes know I'm serious, you know, and I know that he will fight me, and he knows I will fight him, you know. And last thing, what can you tell me about one Mr. Sean Shamrock, how he's influenced you throughout your life, your career, but especially since you've returned <laughs> to the sport in the last few years? Yeah, Sean, uh, Sean Shamrock, um, he's, I'm going to tell you what, I've been friends with Sean Shamrock for a long, long time, man, and uh, he's, he's been, he was, one of my, he was one of the guys that helped drag me out of that dark hole, you know, uh, always had my back when I was at my worst, man, and uh, he's doing big things, man, and I'm doing big things now, and Sean... He's, he's, I'm surprised he's not in this room right now um, without even telling me. But I know he's here. Um, yeah, Sean's great, man. If you guys don't know Sean Shamrock, <laughs> keep, follow Sean Shamrock, man. He's, he's the man. Yeah. Brennan right here. Um, this was also a nice trip for me to get out here. I'm from Connecticut as well, so we together got to escape some of the cold it's weather and get away baby. from yeah. it. Yes, sir. Minus five right now. What? Yeah, it's crazy. I said, but, babe, you better put some so, wood on that wood stove, girl. <laughs> and very awesome to get out here, get away from the cold weather. Oh, yeah. uh, but this is also a big moment for you and people who know you well. Um, this is the first fight, you know, of your of coming back and being on the road. We're in California. It's not yeah. just another fight at Mohegan Sun with everyone coming yeah. to pack out. You know, it's a big fight for you. Um, the first one back. How does it feel? I mean, I know you said you're feeling great, but you know, you're back in the swing of things. You know, on the road again. How's it yeah. feel? Um, it, it feels good, man. It honestly feels like we didn't miss a beat. I mean, it's been years since we traveled, but I got my same guys with me that I traveled with back then. Them guys sitting right in the back. They go everywhere with me. You know, Greg Rebello, Jay Jodwin. We got a, we got a, we got we got Lewis Felix here. He was with me. You know, my boy Lou flies out, dude. He was with me when I fought for a world title. We got our new we got our new buddy back there, Tristan. Tristan Toronto. He'd be a top top he's prospect. Fight for C yes, no. Nope. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, he's a beast. He's fighting in a couple of weeks, man. Bellator should should keep an eye on him and get him before someone else gets him. Before you know, before the bad guys get him. And uh, you know, uh yeah, it, no, but it feels good. It feels good, man. It really feels like we didn't miss a beat, man. We fuck around. We have fun. You know, we do our thing, man. We don't go with the flow. We go. We get our rental car. We get the hell out of here. We go. You know what I'm saying? We go invade local gyms. That's, how, that's what we do. All right. And last question for you. I saw in a prior interview that you did some work with Ross Levine, a kickboxer up in New England. Um, what were you able to take away from his craft and uh, besides implement for, besides for this for, fight? Besides for bruises and welts and fucking black eyes. No. No, Ross... Uh, I, I wish I met Ross a, a long time ago, but you know I'm, I I know him now, and he's uh, and he's he's became a fast friend to me. Uh, I consider him a teammate now already. We've trained we we trained a bunch before I left, and um, I hope to help him with his with his camps too as much as I can. Probably one of the best strikers, and I, I've sparred like I, I like I tell my guys like I've sparred everybody, you know, and I spent a lot of time in California over the years sparring at Kings and everywhere. I sparred a lot of guys. And no one ever has really, like, made me feel, like, almost helpless like that guy does. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck, dude? He, you know? He's, he's an amazing fighter. And he's a really smart dude, you know? And he's, uh, he's insightful. And uh, he helps me with my mental and my physical, dude. He's a beast. He's, he's an asset for sure. Ross Levine. Ross Turbo. The man. Doc Turbo, as I call him. I'll still double leg his ass, though. I hope he sees this. Brennan right here. Where you at? Right here. My man. So you said uh, it's probably not going to make it out the first round. Is that your mindset <laughs> to go in there and I just mean, bang? I, you, 
Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to end up, is, I can game plan as much as I want. And yeah, I'm going to implement, I'm going to implement some planning, of course. But yeah, man, you know, you know that, si- that side of me is going to come out. So they say it's fighting, come out. fighting is 90% mental. So, yeah. so how are you mentally preparing yourself to go in there and bang? You trying to end it in the first round? I how mean, do you yeah, I'm, o- I'm always mindset? looking to end it in the first round. I'm always looking to end it in the first round. It doesn't matter how good a shape I'm in right now, dude. I still don't want to fight 15 minutes. You know what I'm saying? Dude, mm-hmm. that's, I, I want to end it quick. The fans want to see me end it quick. I want to end it quick. That's, what, that's, that's why I'm on the main card. Dude, that's why there's no number next to my name. But I'm on this main card. There's plenty of dudes on the undercard that got numbers next to their names. I don't. But who's on the main card? I am. Because I finish fights, and they know that's what they want to see. The fans want to see. I've never not finished a, a, a fight in the Bellator cage. Like I've said, I've said it now, I've said it over and over again. There's nobody with 10-plus wins in the Bellator cage that has a 100% finish rate besides me. That's it, dude. That's it. And that's why I'm on the main card. After five years, you know, who else could take five years off? Cold turkey, come back and fly. Like no. <laughs> so, so that that fire that you have. I didn't plan that. That just that you, happened right there. That fire that you have burning inside of you. How do you you know keep yourself fueled and, and you know what I'm saying geared up to go ch- uh, face these challenges? I mean, you, you know, just I, I, a lot of it is what I had to overcome to come back here. You know what I mean? And uh, I had to, I had to I had to work so hard on on every aspect of my life to be able to get back in this cage. Not just like improving like skills in like in the gym like my whole life had to change dude i was a bottom of the barrel drug addict dude like work dude 162 pounds like soaking wet like i had to change every single thing so now i'm not going to squander this opportunity dude i'm mentally prepared because i went through the, you can't imagine what the, the hell i went through mentally just to just to be sitting here right now you can't imagine a fight is nothing a fight is literally no, a fight is a joke it's a fucking joke compared to what I've been through, dude. I'm serious, man. I'm serious about that. Make all joking aside. You know, this is fun. This is, this is exciting. This is fun. It's not even a mental challenge to me to get, to get ready for this fight because of what I had to come through, man. You know? Yeah. Brandon, right here. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? Good, good, good. Uh, 16 wins, 15 finishes. I mean, some fighters have problems finishing their lunch. You seem <laughs> to just finish fighters with no problem. <laughs> what goes on in your mind state? Uh, you, you know, I, I don't, I don't go out there. I don't go out there and do the, and do the pitter pat, you know, point fight and sparring. I don't do the glorified sparring, man. I, I go out there to finish the, they, and that's why I still have a job here over 10 years. I signed with these guys in 2011 or 2012, dude, it's 2023. And I was like, and I got fired and I'm back. You know what I'm saying? That's because I finished fights. This is a business. First and foremost, it's a business. You know what I'm saying? And if I was bad for business, I wouldn't be here. I'm fucking good for business. That's why I'm fighting on the main card, because I finish fights. I'm not going the distance. If it goes the distance, both guys should lose. Double L. 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 See ya. Yeah, now to follow that up, you're definitely here for the business. Like you said, they only got three fights on the main card, and you're the one to open it up over yeah. other people that's on the card who fought for the belt and former title uh, champions. So you know you're definitely here for business, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then last but not least, my yep. nine-year-old daughter wants to know, if you're to win this fight, what's going to be your finishing move? <sighs> finishing move. I think I'm going to have the, I'm gonna have double boots in. It's going to be a ground and pound. Ground and pound. He's going to be covered up. I'm going to have those, I'm gonna have those double boots in, posture on top, fucking raining them down, dude. And I'll be looking at the ref like this. Save him. <laughs> Tell your daughter. Or maybe she'll see it before. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody.